Hey everybody, welcome back to Live Free in Toulon. Today is the day. We are checking out the brand new, just released, 40 volt Ryobi 10 gallon wet vac. Everybody's been talking about it. In fact, there's been just a little while back, we talked about what would you like to have in terms of a 40 volt tool, and this was the number one answer. Now I asked this question on Ryobi Rebels, and that is a group that I admin on, and I tell you what, we had a huge response, and I actually was a little surprised that this was one of the big things that everyone wanted, and now it's here. So today we're gonna go over it, we're gonna talk about the tool, and we're gonna give it a pretty good test out here. So stick around, let's jump into it. So as we take a look at this tool, this is 10 gallon capacity. This has 80 CFM capabilities. This can run at 68 dB. Now a couple things that you need to know about this tool. It comes with a few different attachments. This is a squeegee style that you can clean water off of a floor, which is pretty typical. And then you have a brush style, which knocks dust and things loose on the floor as well, which is really helpful. It comes with an eight foot hose, and this is a uh, inch and seven eighths, so this isn't the larger two and a quarter inch hose, but if you look right here, see if we can't get a close up of that, it does actually lock on, and it's a twist lock, which is a little bit different from the previous version, uh, well, the previous wet vac, which was an 18 volt wet vac, the hose is a little bit different too. It's a little bit more stout right through here. Um, the locking mechanisms, and it feels just a little bit better material on the hose itself, a little bit more malleable. You do have a crevice tool uh, that sits right here, which is pretty standard. You have two different wands which extend out. And then, so you can stand, they interlock. This is pretty standard stuff that we're talking about right here. But I do like this, I like how it Locks in at the bottom, snaps in at the top. That keeps things a little bit more stable so it doesn't fall out. So I, I do like that and I can appreciate that as well. But you do have storage here and then you do have two at the top where you can store a couple different attachments there. It does have a handle on the top and this handle does have rubber over molding which is a nice little touch. And then we push this down and what do we see? We uh, The button and this is a two stage uh, wet vac to where you have the first stage and then you have your second stage. First stage being the weaker of the stages, the more quiet of, this, um, of them as well. And number two, that's your most powerful and you'll see that in just a minute. If you take a look at the cover here, this is water resistant and it really just is a cover right here. Uh, I believe this is um, IPX4 or something like that. So it's not waterproof, but it is water resistant. So let's open it up and take a look at the inside. And these are just push tabs right here, so it isn't a latching mechanism. It's just a push tab where you press it in, like so, it comes up. That's on both sides. Now on this, you do see a full-size filter. This is a large filter, and it has a screw on the top of it right here, and that's how you unlock it and then lock it back into place. So that's really nice to see. Just take this off. You can see inside of here. Pretty simple. This is actually just a quarter twist lock when it comes to these filters, but I'm surprised it does have the corrugated steel in this in the middle of it to give it a little bit more strength. This has a really tight seal, which is nice to see actually. You don't you don't see that a lot on these. So we'll put that right down in there. Now it's locked in place. Not a problem. There is a seal here uh, that you see. This is just a nice little foam seal. So we're going to put this back on top. Then you have your plug down at the bottom. Let's take this off. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, if we take a look at it though, I want to get a pretty good close up of this. There's only threads on the bottom of it. There's no threads on top. I've never seen that before. I'm not sure why that is. So if somebody knows why, you only have threads on the bottom and there's a flat spot on the bottom as well. Uh, you know, let me know in the comments. I, I, I'd like to know if there's some type of 
scientific or engineering reason for that. And then let's take a look at the bottom. This is very, uh, very, very simple. Uh, just a flat bottom. You have, do have some casters here. Take a look at the casters. These are pretty chintzy. They're pretty, uh, probably the cheapest casters I've ever seen in my life. So, mm, you guys could have done a little better than that, Ryobi. But all in all, um, we're going to test it out. So, First, I have two gallons, uh, or I have <laughs> have two five-gallon buckets here, and we're going to test out the ten-gallon capacity of this. And as we're testing out the ten-gallon capacity, we're going to time it as well, and we're going to see how long it actually takes on speed two, which is the highest speed, in order to get this up. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and take some of the sawdust off the floor to see how it cleans and how it does pretty well there. Um, and I'm going to pour some water on the floor to see how it actually vacuums up and how it does there as well. So I want this to be a pretty practical test, but first and foremost, let's throw a battery in here. I'm using a 4 amp hour battery. Now let's put it on number one. Okay, so it's locked in. Let's turn it on number one. This is rated at 68 dB, which is very quiet for a vacuum. That's pretty decent suction. Nothing to call home about right now, but let's kick it up to the higher speed. So as you can see on the first setting, which is a 68 dB, that is where you're going to get the quietness. But on the power, which is your second setting, that's a lot higher than 68 dB. That's probably right around 75 um, or 78 um, or could even be 80. I don't know. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. Setting number one. Okay, so we've got to put the water insert into the flat piece here. It's pretty simple, it just slides right in. Okay, that's done, pretty simple. The low setting is not for water pickup. Okay, so 10 gallons of water. We're gonna try and fill this up with 10 gallons. This is empty. We're gonna set it on number two and let's just see how it does. Here we go. Okay, that's all she wrote. This is full of water. Um, I got maybe half of this in here. So, you know, maybe seven and a half gallons is all that this was able to hold at this point. So, definitely did not hold 10 gallons for sure. And there's still, this is full of water to the uh, hose here. So, well, let's see how this is doing. Let's take a look inside. All right, so as you can see, you know, obviously if it went to the top, that would, that would be 10 gallons, but you know, as soon as it hits this hose inlet right here, it's gonna stop. 
Okay, everybody, so you saw this thing perform. You saw how it's built. Uh, my first impressions is it has a lot of power. I think that it performs very well for what it is. I think it's a huge step up from the previous 18 volt uh, platform versions of this. Um, and I really think that I haven't used another vacuum that quite feels like this on the cordless market. I would say even on my rigid corded versions of wet dry facts, well, this is just as powerful. And I tell you what, it's kind of interesting because whenever it runs idle without any type of load on it, well, it kind of feels a little weak, you know, even on the high setting. But as soon as it feels a load, the motor kicks up and this thing is a monster, which is really interesting. I like that it has two stages. It gives you the option of being a little bit more quiet, a little more gentle on things if you need to be, like if you're working on a countertop or something like that. And then you got that powerhouse and that's really gonna pick up the water off the floor. Now this has so much power, if you look at the crevice tool, I just want you to take a look at this side. It actually has a cutout right here because you need that relief because you need some bypass suction to get into this thing. That's how powerful it is. It's kind of like some of those Dyson vacuums. <clears throat> but anyways, I hope that this was helpful to someone out there. I hope that you found it informative. If you did, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Hey, we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.